Chapter 3, Mishnah 6. The Mishnah lists the types of consecrated items that are subject to Me'ila. Any consecrated item that is fit to be offered on the Mizbeach, but is not fit to be used for Bedek Abais, which includes certain types of animals, unblemished cattle, sheep and goats, birds, turtle doves and young pigeons, and some food items, flour, oil and wine, or any consecrated item that is fit for Bedek Habais, but is not fit for the Mizbeach, such as gold, silver and building materials, or even a consecrated item that is fit neither for the Mizbeach nor for Bedek Abais, such as most foods, is subject to Me'ila, since any of these items can be used for Hekdesh. The Mishnah gives examples of these three categories. How is this so? If someone consecrated a pit that is full of water, which is fit only for Bedek Abais, a trash heap that is full of manure, which is fit neither for the Mizbeach nor for Bedek Abais, a dovecote, birdhouse for doves, that is full of doves, which are fit only for the Mizbeach, a tree that is full of fruit, which are fit only for the Mizbeach, or a field that is full of grass, which is fit neither for the Mizbeach nor for Bedek Abais, both the items themselves, i.e. the pit, trash heap, etc., and what is inside them, i.e. the water manure, etc., are subject to Me'ila, even though he specified only the item itself and not its contents. In the above cases, the contents, water, manure, etc., were inside the items, pit, trash heap, etc., at the time the items were consecrated. The Mishnah now discusses the law that applies when the contents were not there at the time of consecration and came only later. But if someone consecrated a pit and only afterward it became filled with water, a trash heap and only afterward it became filled with manure, a dove coat and only afterward it became filled with doves, a tree and only afterward it became filled with fruit, or a field and only afterward it became filled with grass, the item itself, i.e. the pit, trash heap, etc., is subject to Me'ila. But what is inside it, i.e. water, manure, etc., is not subject to Me'ila, because Me'ila applies only to the actual item that was consecrated, not to things that were later placed in it or grew from it. These are the words of Rabbi Huda. A ton of disagrees in certain cases. Rabbi Shimon says, one who consecrates a field or a tree, and it then becomes filled with whatever grew there, grass or fruit, both the field or tree and its produce are subject to Me'ila, because the produce is a growth of hektish. According to Rabbi Shimon, anything that grows from a consecrated item is subject to Me'ila, just like the original item. If the, in the other cases, however, where the pit, trash heap, or dove coat was empty at the time of its consecration and later became filled, Rabbi Shimon agrees that the contents are exempt from Me'ila. <coughs> Since water, manure, and doves do not grow from the consecrated items. The previous Mishnah taught that although the milk of consecrated animals is not subject to Me'ila, it is prohibited to derive benefit from it. Our Mishnah discusses whether offspring of consecrated items can be allowed to nurse from their mothers. The offspring of a Miser animal that was born before its mother was designated as Miser must not be allowed to nurse from the Miser animal, i.e. its mother. Since the offspring is Chuen, unconsecrated, if it were to nurse from its mother, the owner would be deriving benefit from the milk of a consecrated animal. Therefore, others would donate some of their own unconsecrated milk for this purpose, i.e. to feed the nursing offspring of Miser animals. Similarly, the offspring of a consecrated animal that was born before its mother was designated as a korban must not be allowed to nurse from the consecrated animal, i.e. its mother. Others would therefore donate milk for this purpose, i.e. to feed the nursing offspring of consecrated animals. When a laborer is hired to work with produce, he is enti entitled to eat from the produce as he works with it. Devarim chapter 23 verses 25 and 26. See Baba Metziah chapter 7, 2 through 8 for the details of this law. An animal, too, must be permitted to eat the produce it is threshing. As the Torah states in Devarim 25, verse 4, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is threshing. The Mishnah teaches the laws concerning people and animals that perform work with the produce of Hekdesh. Workers may not eat from the dried figs of Hekdesh with which they are working. And similarly, a cow must not be allowed to eat from the vetch, a type of bean of Hekdesh, that it is threshing.